Do you often get new client leads through email? My business is almost 100% referral based, which means I get introductions via email all the time. While I love that my clients value what I do and want to share it with others, I don't love having to manually enter my new leads into my CRM, which is Insightly. That means that sometimes new leads can fall through the cracks. Hi, I'm Laura from solopreneurmentor.com. I have 15 years experience running a successful web development business called D3 Solutions from Home. In this video, I will show you how to set up Zapier to automate adding new leads to Insightly by forwarding emails to a special email parser. Sounds complicated, but it's super easy. And I will know it will save you a ton of time and prevent you from forgetting about new leads. Best of all, Zapier is free to use and to get started so you can try it and see if it works for you. Let's tackle your technology trouble together. For this tutorial, you only need to be a beginner. You can do it, I promise. You will also need an Insightly account, although you can use any CRM that Zapier supports. You will also need an email account and you will need to sign up for a free Zapier account. Go ahead and do that first before beginning. The first place we're going to get started is at a website called parser.zapier.com. You will need to log in or sign up for a free account. Once you have logged in, you will see your dashboard. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is create a mailbox. It is going to try to give you a name that no one could possibly remember, so I'm going to go ahead and click skip waiting and I'm going to type in a name that I can remember. My business is called D3 Website Solutions so I'm going to type in D3 and I'm going to type in new lead. This is something I can easily remember and I'll show you why I need to remember in a minute. And then once I've done all that I'm going to leave the default settings and click save address in template. Oh it must be unique. I guess someone else might be using that. So let's do D3 lead maybe. All right. So I've got D3 lead at robotzapier.com. And I see I actually am using that one already. So that would be why. Now it says that I have no email yet. So I want to go ahead and forward myself an email. Now I've created a dummy email that I'm going to forward myself. So let's pretend this is an email I've gotten from a client introducing me to someone and the info for the person is in this particular email. So instead of doing all the copy and paste myself, I'm gonna have Zapier do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna forward this and I'm gonna forward it to that email address, d3lead at robot.zapier.com. And I'm going to type in the title of um, new lead, whatever it is you want to know. You really don't have to have it be anything specific here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete everything that's not important. And next what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in a few keys for myself. So name, and I'm going to use a double colon just because it's a little bit better. Title, company. And this is something I need to remember every time I do this. So every time I want to add a new lead, I'm going to have to type in these exact same fields. Um, so because the parser is going to take everything after this stuff, so it kind of needs to be the same every time. So do what makes sense for you, but know that you have to have some way of delineate, delineating what is the name of the person, what's the title of the person, and maybe actually I want to go ahead and do first name, last name, Smith. And I'm actually, I use a Mac, I'm going to actually go ahead and uh, remove the style from that just to get the formatting nice. All right, so I've got to, I went ahead and I'm going to forward this um, on. And now I'm going to go ahead and refresh my page and it says last email was sent zero minutes ago. So now I'm going to go ahead and click edit because I need to create my template. 
So I don't, I don't want to do anything necessarily with this. Doesn't need, doesn't matter to me. But what I do want to use is I want to highlight the first name and I type in first name. I'm going to highlight the last name and type in last name. I'm going to type in title, click save, company, click save, phone, click save, and email address. Now um, I'm going to go ahead and click save address and template. Okay. Now that I've created my email parser, I'm going to move on to Zapier. I'm going to assume that you've already signed up for your free Zapier plan. I'm going to go ahead and click on this big orange button called make a zap. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to use the email parser. I've already used the email parser so it shows up under my apps but I'm going to click on email parser and then I'm going to choose new email. Click save and continue. Now I've already connected my account. If you have not connected your account, you simply click connect a new account and then you would authorize your account. I'm going to go ahead and click and change this to Insightly lead from email. Now it's important to note that you don't have to have four different accounts here. The same email parser account can be you can be used for any time you set up a zap. I'm I'm just showing you what it would be like if you were creating this from scratch. I'm gonna go ahead and click test just to make sure. It gives me a success button. I'm gonna click save and continue. The next thing I want to do is I want to choose the mailbox that this is going to um, trigger my action. So this is for a D3 at robot.zapier.com. So anytime an email comes into this email address, click continue. And then I do have an email address or an email in there that I've already forwarded, so I'm good. So I'm gonna click fetch and continue. And it says test successful, I got the email, good. So we're gonna click continue now. Now we're gonna actually create an action. What do we want to happen after this trigger? And that is when we actually want to create a lead in Insightly. So we're gonna click on Insightly here, or if it's not showing up here, you can type it in and find what you're looking for. I want to create a, create a contact, or I can see to see if there's a create a lead. So either you can choose either one. You can create a contact or you can create a lead. I'm gonna go ahead and create a lead. Um, and click continue. Now I've already connected my Insightly account. If you have not create, connected your Insightly account, you can click on connect a new account. It is going to ask you for the API key, which is found under my info user settings. So if you go over to Insightly and you go up to my info up here, user settings, and scroll down, you will see the API key here. This is the API you need to copy and paste into the Zapier um, API key box here and click save or yes, continue. Once you've done that, you'll have a connection. Um, you can then rename it to whatever it makes sense to you so you remember what it is next time you need to use it. Click test just to make sure we're good to go. Click save and continue. Now this is where you fill in all the information from the email parser. So you click on the little button over here and it's going to say all the different template things that I've got. So I've got parse output first name, that's the first name. Then I'm gonna do parse output last name. Then I'm gonna do the title or the job description. Let's see if I can find it. Um, parse output title. I'm going to type in the name would be parse output company and then any of the other information that you want to fill in you absolutely could here but remember this is a template so anytime you forward this email to this particular parser it's going to set that exact same settings for all of them so just make sure you use that wisely. The email address I did set as well parse output email and the phone number. I'm just gonna go ahead and set it as main parse output phone. 
and then any of the additional information. Now you could do as much information in that template as you would like to, um, but keep in mind that it could fail if you don't have that particular item in the template. So if I didn't put like, for example, first name, colon, colon, and then the first name in the, um, then the parser would give me an error and say, hey, wait, wait a second, you didn't include the first name, I don't know what to do, and your zap could fail. So if you're gonna do that, just make sure that when you're filling out that email and you're forwarding it, go ahead and do first name colon colon and then just leave it blank. Um, obviously, you probably want a first name, but that might be more pertinent to using email or phone. If you don't have their phone number, for example, you would put still phone colon colon and then leave it blank. Just keep that in mind as you're as you're figuring out what works for you and how you can use this best in your business. I'm pretty happy with all that. You could also add in tags. So for example, maybe you wanna add in a tag that it was a referral. Um, I use that tag a lot just to make sure I keep track of all my referrals. Um, and maybe in that email you even want to put a referral tag and who it was from so that you can use that then maybe in the description, um, um, which might come in handy as well. I'm gonna click save and continue for now. Now you can kind of look through there just to make sure that it's picking up everything we want. It is, so I'm gonna go ahead and click create and continue. Once I've done that, it should have created my new lead. So I'm gonna go back to Insightly. I'm gonna go down to leads and I'm going to refresh. And I'm gonna see, yep, sure enough, here is John Smith from ABC Company, and here is his information. So it worked. Once I'm done with that, I'm gonna go back to Zapier, I'm gonna click Finish. I'm gonna name this Zap to in um, create lead from email. And I'm gonna turn my Zap on. Now the Zap will run every 15 minutes, so, it might take a few minutes for it to actually come into Insightly after you forward it. Give it time, it will work. Um, if it does fail, you can certainly go back to your dashboard and see the zaps that you've created um, and then go to the history to see which ones have failed um, so that you can keep track of that. But once these are running, you should not have to come back to this Zapier account at all. It should just run completely in the background, really helping you do what you need to do in your business, making you more productive so that you can use technology to the extent that it was supposed to be used, which is to help you um, do your work better. Congratulations, we just tackled your technology trouble together. Doesn't it feel good to be able to use technology the way it was intended? Thanks for watching this video and please be sure to check out the additional resources listed below and to share this video with others who need technology help too. Please visit solopreneurmentor.com for more tips and tricks and tutorials on how to use technology to make you more productive in building your online business from home.